Hello and welcome to episode 10 of How to Code Games in BBC Basic. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at how the game gets started. Okay, so as we uh, said in the ending of the last video, uh, where we're going to pick things up from today is Proc Play. So as we saw in the last video, the main program controls the overall flow of the program itself um, and it also contains procedures that set up the intro screens. But at the point at which a player presses the spacebar at any stage uh, during any of those intro screens, it will call proc play. And that's where the game really kicks off. So if we jump into proc play, we can see that what this procedure is doing is it's not simply starting the game, it's actually starting the, if you like, the master flow of the overall game within which there can be multiple levels of the game. So by that, I mean that when you say that you want to start playing, what you're actually indicating to the program is you want to start playing and you want to keep on playing for as long as you have lives to spare. Um, and that means that if you are successful, obviously, in clearing uh, the first level, let's say, and destroying all of the cosmic invaders, it's because of proc play that you will then go on to play the next level and the next level and the next level until such time as you run out of lives. And your lives are um, held in this variable here, which is called base percentage. Um, and as you can see, um, there are uh, stages not just here, but elsewhere in the program where that could reduce by one. Um, and if it does obviously reach the stage of being zero um, and another condition, which we will look at later on, um, proc play will say that actually, yes, this is now the end of the game overall, not just of the current level, but of the game itself. Now, it's done in a very clever way, again, using loops, which we've looked at before, but this time we'll actually jump into a nested loop. So at the beginning of proc play, the first thing that it has to do is actually initialize the overall game. And that means regardless of um, anything to do with which level you're on, this is the overall starting point of the game. So your score, as you can see here, will be set to zero, clearly, because it's the beginning of the game. Your number of lives is set to three, which is this base percentage variable. So that you, you, you get three lives and obviously you can hopefully spread those lives across multiple levels if you're good at the game. And there is this variable here, which is called start percentage equals zero. Now we'll look at that variable a little bit later, but the main thing to point out is that proc play is governing the overall control of the game itself. Then we come into the, um, the sort of first loop, if you like, which is a repeat until loop. And this repeat loop, uh, the first step of which is something called proc setup game. So it says proc setup game. It might also be more properly called setup level, because actually, if you manage to complete the first level of Cosmic Invaders, it is this loop that will initiate the next level of the game. So it actually repeats um, for as long as you have lives remaining. And each time you complete a level, it will be proc setup game that runs in order to create the next level. And there are other variables, uh, which we'll also look at in this video series, which control the difficulty of each subsequent level as well. So it doesn't just repeat. It's not like playing level one over and over again. Um, there are some other variables at play, which will cause the subsequent levels to become harder. And that's a crucial feature of an arcade game, particularly one like Cosmic Invaders, um, because although the game itself is fairly simple, uh, what you need to hopefully include if you if you create a game like this of your own is some way of the game increasing in difficulty so that the challenge continues to get harder and harder. Because if you just loop around and, and play the same level over and over again, it's not particularly exciting for, for the player and there's not much of a challenge involved. So proc setup game, as I say, could more, more accurately be referred to as proc setup level, because that's actually what it does. It creates the first, in this case, the first level. And if this loop were to repeat um, because you completed that level, proc setup game will be used to create level two and then level three and level four and so on, if you are particularly good at the game. Now, what's actually going on inside this master loop is a nested loop. So we've got the master loop that is essentially just repeating proc setup game. So you can think of that as the loop that controls moving from one level to the next. But then within that, you have the loop that controls what's going on within the level. And this is obviously what controls the overall gameplay once your, once your level has started. 
So it's another repeat loop and it will loop within the master loop. And that's an important thing to understand. So what happens here is this repeat loop will continue until such time as a variable uh, called finish becomes true. And that variable of finish doesn't mean that you've necessarily um, run out of lives. It just means that this particular level is over. It could be over because you've lost all your lives. That is one condition that would set the finish variable to true. But it could also be over because you've actually completed the level. And that's another condition under which the finish variable will be set to true. Now, I know we can't see where that variable is being set because it's controlled at other stages within different procedures that we'll look at in subsequent episodes. Um, but the main thing to understand is that this finish variable uh, can be controlled uh, in one of two conditions. It can either be set to true because you've run out of lives or it can be set to true because you've completed the level successfully. So suffice it to say, this variable being true doesn't necessarily mean bad news. It could actually mean very good news. Um, but that's the exit condition. So all the while that finish variable is set to false, this uh, repeat loop will continue going round and around. And it's this loop that's actually governing what's going on in the game itself. And at a, at a high level, it's quite easy to understand what's going on here. The first thing is it calls a procedure called PROC key test, which is very similar to the time key uh, procedure that we looked at previously, except that it doesn't include any kind of artificial weight. It just uses um, some BBC basic logic to test what key the user has pressed. And based on what key they've pressed, it will obviously instigate different actions. Having done that, it then calls another procedure called PROC update invaders which will update the invaders on the screen. Now that's actually quite a complex series of procedures, which we won't look at today, but suffice it to say, what this is doing is it's controlling what happens to the cosmic invaders on the screen. So within this procedure and the other procedures that it calls, you'll see logic that controls the movement of the invaders across the screen from left to right, and also moving steadily downwards. You'll see procedures that also control whether or not those invaders have been hit. And depending on the conditions in which they've been hit, it also controls what are called the X and Y boundaries of the overall grid of cosmic invaders. But that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. For now, all we need to think of is, first, this checks what, what key the user's pressed and takes the appropriate action. And then second, it will update the invaders uh, in terms of their position on the screen. And as you can see here, the only other thing that it's doing is it checks that finish variable. So it checks to make sure that finish isn't true. Obviously, if finish was true, that's a, that's a loop exit condition. But in addition to that, this finish variable is also being used to control the number of bombs on the screen. And those bombs are the bombs which are, in, in the context of the game, are supposed to be the bombs that are falling from the cosmic invaders and which could strike the player at the bottom. Actually, the control of the bombs themselves is done independently of the invaders. That's one of the tricks of uh, an arcade game. What appears to the user uh, as bombs falling from the aliens is in fact being controlled independently by a whole other set of procedures. But that's the, the joy, if you like, of, of creating uh, computer games. What you actually do is quite similar to what a stage magician does. Um, you're actually putting together things that look as if they are connected and give the appearance of something uh, being connected to something else on the screen. But actually the control of all of these things is done independently. Not just the bombs, but the invaders are controlled independently and the player's uh, base and even the missiles that the player fires. All of these things are actually controlled independently within the game and they have their own procedures that, that actually control that activity. So just to recap, this uh, internal loop here checks what, player, uh, what keys have been pressed by the player and takes appropriate action updates the invaders, assuming that the level hasn't finished. It also um, does some logic to control some bombs on the screen, potentially adding some extra bombs and checking whether those bombs have hit anything. And it will loop around until such time as the finish variable becomes true. Now, if the finish variable does become true, this uh, step of the code doesn't actually check whether or not the condition for it being set to true is because the players run out of lives or not. It will assume that the player hasn't run out of lives because the next thing that it does is it increments this variable here. Now, I only referred to it briefly earlier and just said it got set to zero, but I didn't explain what that variable does. So start percentage you can think of as the indicator to say which level the player is on. So level one, technically speaking, is level zero. So you'll remember that in BBC Basic, a lot of these things are indexed from zero. 
So if you think about it, level one is level zero. So if you complete level zero, what you need to be able to do is increment that variable by adding one to show that the, the next level has been reached. Now, as I say, at the moment in the code, it hasn't actually confirmed whether or not you've completed the level or not. Um, it's just saying that if this loop finishes, then it will increment the level number by one. There'll be later code elsewhere in the program to then check whether or not it needs to continue to run uh, the master loop to, to create a new level or not. Um, and that's actually controlled by this variable here, which we're, which we're not going to look at just yet. Um, but essentially, it increments the start percentage variable by one. And then if it needs to actually make use of the fact that that's gone up by one, it will do so. And there's other code in the game that checks that variable. And depending on what the value of it is, it increments the difficulty uh, for certain things like number of bombs on the screen and the speed at which the aliens move and so on. Um, and then, as you can see here, uh, if if the master loop um, needs to run, if you like, a second time to create a new level, um, one of the things that it'll do is check whether or not this p percentage variable uh, equals seven. So th these um, less than, greater than signs together, this basically means does not equal. So this master loop will repeat until such time as this variable does not equal seven. Now that seems a little bit cryptic, it's like, why is seven the magic number in this case? As I say, we will look at that in future videos. Uh, but the main thing to understand here is that this master loop will keep going round as long as the player um, has lives remaining. And each time it is proc setup game that is doing the, uh, the magic to create a new level. One final thing to reference in this proc play procedure is that uh, if it is actually curtains for the player, so if we assume that actually they've run out of lives, and uh, it's the end of the game, which you can see that must be the case because all the code that comes from line 800 down, uh, this is code that will only run once this master loop has finished. So remember that everything that runs within the nested loop will keep going round and around and around until that nested loop finishes. Everything within the master loop will keep going round and around and around until that master loop has finished, at which point it's only then that code from 800 down will be run within this procedure. And really all that this is doing is it's checking to see whether score percentage, which you'll remember from earlier was set to zero at the start of the game, but obviously there will be procedures further down that control the player's score. So what it's doing here is it's checking to see have they managed to reach a score that is greater than the lowest value in the high score table. So remember scores percentage is a different variable from score percentage. Score percentage is just the, the player's score within this particular game. But scores plural percentage is a dim array, which contains 10 values. Um, and it's looking at the last value in the array, which is the ninth value, remember, because it indexes from zero. So it's basically saying, has the, has the player managed to score a score higher than the lowest value in the high score table? If, it, if they have, it will call proc score, which is a different procedure from the proc scores and the proc high score that we uh, have looked at previously. This is another procedure. And without going into it now, this procedure essentially allows the player to put their name into the high score table. Of course, if they haven't, so if their score isn't greater than the lowest value in the high score table, then the procedure will just end. So there's no else condition here. This is just a straightforward if then. Um, and if that condition is not met, then the procedure will just end. And as we'll remember from um, a previous video, because proc play was actually called, if we go back, uh, proc play was called from this line because even if they press spacebar uh, at this stage in the program of line 470 it still goes to line 510 and then calls proc play so what the player will actually see if they haven't got a score that's high enough to go into the high score table then all that happens is they will just see the high score table uh, as the sort of end screen for the game itself and then of course we're back into the main program which gives the player the opportunity to decide whether or not they want to play again um, and that's really sort of quite a ni ni nice and neat way of showing how proc play and the main program itself interact with each other. So proc play is the thing that's actually controlling the game overall. And then within that, there are there is a series of loops and nested loops that control the individual levels within the game. And at the point at which the game ends, the player is then returned, either invited to put their score into the high score table or simply um, invited to look at the high score table and uh, see what they could have won, so to speak. 
Um, so that really concludes uh, this episode. So we've had a good understanding of what it is that Proc Play is actually doing, and if you like the overall control um, of, of how the game is, is executed and how you can simulate the idea of levels within a game by recycling the same procedures pretty much, um, but using variables to control the difficulty setting. In the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at Proc Setup Game, which is the procedure that creates a fresh new level. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to be slowing down my emulator a little bit to try and show you how um, what's happening within Proc Setup Game is done. So you can we'll slow it down and you can actually see each of the procedures in sequence being executed. I hope you'll join me for that episode. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one. And uh, until then, goodbye.